Hello, fifth graders. I can't wait for you to see the video of the amazing organisms that live in this pond. We're going to look at how these organisms, the biosphere, interacts with the hydrosphere, the water in the pond. So as you're looking at these organisms from very small, we'll need a microscope to look at them, all the way up to ones you can hold in your hand and some that are so big, you need two hands to hold them. We'll take a look at these organisms and then think, what kind of interactions do they go through as they interact with the hydrosphere. So enjoy the video, look at it, and come up with those interactions. Hey, as an option, if you want to, the second page of the student resources, you could create a pond ecosystem food web like you did in the fall with the organisms that you see in the video. Have fun, enjoy, take care. See you. Check out the chlorophyll in that algae. It's really cool. It's a type of algae called spirogyra, and it has a spiral chloroplast in it, which makes food for the plant. Really cool looking. It's magnified about 100 times. I got this organism called a sea shrimp. It's living in pond water. It's swimming around with the algae. See the, oh, there it is, moving cool. This is a tiny, tiny organism. We're magnifying it 100, more than 100 times more than 100 times magnification. Check this out. It's the tadpole of a green frog. I found it in the pond behind my house. It's a big one. Just look at that tail. Look at its body. It looks nothing like the adult green frog. This tadpole right now is breathing oxygen through gills. It has internal gills so it can breathe in the water. Look at its little mouth. With that little mouth, it can eat algae and other small plant matter that Hello, it finds. Hello, fifth grade it. friends. I'm back here at this pond because I'm thinking about interactions. Nice job on figuring out the earth system interactions. Today we're going to look at how the biosphere interacts with hydrosphere. Get it? Remember in the fall when we looked at pond ecosystems and food chains and food webs in a pond? Well, let's take a look in this pond and see what we get. Here I go. I'm going to take a dip right now. You ready? wonder what we're going to get. Let me take a look. Remember these from the pond at Blanford? That is the nymph or naiad of a very special insect called a, wait for it, dragonfly. So we got a dragonfly nymph already. And then you can also see this little tiny crawling water bug. We found a lot of them in the Blanford pond too. Friends, all of these animals living in this pond, great and small, depend on this water and not just water, they depend on clean water. Here's a creature you might recognize with three tails, long body. It's a damselfly nymph. So they live in the pond. I don't know if you can see these little guys, but there are hundreds of these little water mites. They look like little red tomatoes swimming around. They're actually in the spider family. And this pond has a lot of them. That may be a sign of good health. Little tiny spider mites, see them? They call them water mites. There are many, many species of mites. They have eight legs. They're in the spider group. Wow, lots of them in there. This pond is just rich with life. I wonder if that means the water's clean. Wow, friends, look at this rich life. These are insects. They all have six legs and they're all in a nymph stage or naiad stage. These will all three turn into flying insects. Dragonfly, nymph, another species of dragonfly, and there's a little damselfly. I want to put that back because they breathe oxygen in the water, they have gills. And so that water needs to be clean for them to survive. So they interact, they interact with the hydrosphere because they breathe oxygen. And they need that in dissolved in the water. They need clean water. So I'm going to let them go now and we will look for some bigger animals that might live in this pond of science. up and fly above the pond and catch mosquitoes. Thank you.
Wow. <laughs> this is what lives in this pond. It's a largemouth bass. And it thought my lure was some kind of prey. I put it back. See its gills? It's got to breathe clean water through those gills. Look at this is why they call it a largemouth bass. Its mouth is pretty large. I'm going to let it go gently now before it needs oxygen. Here, do you want to get this when I put it in the water? I'm going to set it in the water and just kind of let it go back and forth. Make sure that it's breathing okay before I let it go. That's an older bass that's been around a while. I'm going to wait till it kind of wiggles out of my hand. Oh, yeah, now it's doing okay. There it goes. Nice, yeah. in this pond. They need clean, they need clean water. Look at what huge that's. This will come out of these beautiful fish, rainbow trout. Let's get them back in the water. See those spots? This guy needs to breathe. I gotta hold him and make sure he gets revived. He just fought a valiant fight. Let that yeah!